My name is Kristen McAdams, host of the Psychologist Podcast and Integrative Mental Health Therapist, and I am here with Dr. William Pollock. He is the creator of the PMF Mat, correct? Yes, one yes. particular brand, yes. Yes, one particular brand. Yes, but to me, I know nothing about PEMF. And so to me, you're like everything. I have to be the expert. You have to be the expert. Yeah. That's going to make you expert. So tell us a little bit about what, I know EMF is electromagnetic field. Right. Um, but I, I just learned this at this conference, PEMF is pulsed electromagnetic field. Perfect. And I worked with the nervous system and I know a lot about like electrical signaling in the body and what that means for us, but I feel like you can illuminate us much, all right. on a much deeper level. Well, all electrical activity is associated with the magnetic field. And that's why we call it electromagnetic. Okay. So the second force in the universe is electromagnetic. Is the magnet part of the electromagnetic? It, they're, they're inseparable. Okay. Okay. They are, are inseparable. Yeah. So EMF again is projected out into the environment to communicate with other other receivers, uh -huh. which is cell phones and yeah. Wi-Fi and so on. Bodies get in the way, and it, it causes irritation because it's not designed for for human use. Right. And it's like a microwave oven. It's microwaves, and so microwaves are absorbed, and therefore they heat. Wow. And therefore they kill. Yeah. Right. Or damage, or etc. Yeah. So that's why microwaves or EMFs are not so good for us. But PEMFs are made in a complete different way. And who discovered the PEMF? Hey, Doc. Tesla. Tesla. Okay, I was going to guess that. Tesla was the wrong. first person <laughs> to discover that. What he discovered is if you take a wire. Any electrical wire has a, an outgoing wire and a returning wire. Okay. To make a circuit. Circuit. Yep. Right. Yep. But when they're like that, <clears throat> then any the electrical fields and the magnetic fields are, are opposing each other. Okay. They're counteracting each other. One's okay. going out, one's coming back, and so they counteract. Mm -hmm. What Tesla discovered is that you take that coil and you open it up. Okay. Creates a whole different. Now the the the, con the contrast between the two sets of wires, the returning and the, and the outgoing. Mm -hmm is nullified. And now a magnetic field is created. Okay. So whatever you have current flowing in a wire typically, or in any circuit for that matter, so even a neural circuit mm -hmm. in, the, in the brain or in the body, there's a nerve conducting, it's producing a magnetic field. But it doesn't even have to be a nerve. Okay. It can be fluid flowing down what we call a fascial plane. Mm -hmm. So between two muscle groups, you have a gutter, mm -hmm. typically a okay. fluid. And that fluid can conduct charge as well. And it's electric by itself. So the body's full of electrical activity. Uh -huh. But the key principle is that once you separate that wire from the from the contra contraindication or contrabalancing effect, you create a magnetic field. And that magnetic field is perpendicular. So in other words, it's right hand rule. So here's my my thumb is the current flow. Mm -hmm. Wherever that wherever that flow is. Mm -hmm. Then a magnetic field is being produced perpendicular to the flow of that current. Okay. So as the current pulses, the magnetic field goes like that. As a as current settles down, the, the, the pop magnetic field comes back. Interesting. Pulse goes up, it comes back. So that the EMFs are our open loop. Mm -hmm. They're open, they keep on going. They just keep flowing. Yep. Okay. This is a closed loop. So the magnetic field that is produced, it expands and comes back. Okay. It expands and comes back. So that's produced artificially by Current uh, flowing through a wire that's manufactured to do that. So that's what PMFs are. So the the brain produces a lot of electric electrical activity, mm -hmm. and we have devices called uh, magnetoencephalograms. Okay. That measure the magnetic fields of the of the brain, okay. right. and they're now used in medicine to map the electrical activity of seizure foci. So wherever you have a, a focus in the brain that's going to produce a seizure, it's hyperactive electrically. Mm -hmm. And then that, that electrical activity from that's like a volcano or like an explosion, basically, just goes like that into the brain, which then causes the seizure. Okay. So the magnetic fields, that, that activity produces a very strong magnetic field, which is now detected by, <clears throat> by these machines. Mm -hmm. That's what we can see. When <clears throat> and then we can see that. And what happens, that's used that for planning surgery. Mm -hmm to destroy that focus. It gives you the visual to be able to know where. Essentially, you have a visual, you have a three-dimensional uh, composition that, that tells you exactly where that focus is. Okay. You can do the same thing with the heart. You can do it basically anywhere in the body, but most of the magnetic signals in the rest of the body are very weak. So they're too, they're too weak to be able to be useful. 
but they're useful for the heart and they're useful for the brain. So that's at a, at a cellular level or at a basic level that the brain is an electromagnetic apparatus. Mm -hmm. Now it's more than that, obviously, it's an intelligence sure. apparatus, sure. right? Yeah, but we don't have that intelligence without that energy, right? Without you cannot that, have that. Right, it's right. always on, it's never really Although on. Although we can yeah. argue about consciousness. Sure, <laughs> that's a, he's gonna have to come on my podcast for that. <laughs> We're gonna have to have a call. So we can argue about consciousness. Uh, consciousness and physical awareness are two complete different things. Mm -hmm. And our brains are basically um, sensing, using all the sensory information from the rest of our body to tell us how we are doing in space. So you're having this input, right? And then it's and the brain says it's coming from the left field, and it's a and it's a, a gun shot. Uh -huh. I better have watched this bullet coming my way. Yeah. Right? Yep. Uh, so we're able to triangulate as well through the brain, the brain processing processing all this information. Um, that information processing is what it causes us to be what we think conscious. Okay. Well, I don't call it consciousness. I call it awareness. Yes. Yeah. Right. This That's is, how I refer to it. Also. Yeah, it's yeah. Awareness. So PMF therapy can influence awareness because in order to say have um, a fear reaction, mm -hmm. you produce neurochemicals, right? You have a, a reaction, a psychological reaction to it that goes up into the brain, causes chemicals to be released, that causes EEG activity, biological cascade, a biological cascade through the whole brain too. Mm -hmm. Right, goes to specific areas of the brain that receive those signals. Right. So touch is received in a different part of the brain. Mm -hmm. Then, then visual, visual cortex gets the visual context. Auditory cortex gets the auditory inputs. Mm -hmm. Right. Sensory from from the hands and the, and the feet, so on. And that's going to that. affect like your blood flow, hormone balance, like all of those different things. All right? those things that are the reactions that happen as a result of all of that. Yeah. Right, then produces these physiologic response. It makes kind of the nervous system the top of the waterfall for everything else, right? Essentially. Okay. Essentially. I was right about that. Well, that well, you're, you're right. Except, <laughs> except in big throw things too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. But right, in its own way. So PEMFs um, are basically replicating essentially what the brain does by itself. Okay. But what they're doing then is they're directing. Okay. The traffic. So mm -hmm. if I take a magnetic field and stimulate the Simulated into the brain, it's activating all the neurons that are electrically charged already and amplifying those signals. Okay. So now you can actually create a current flowing in the brain where you want it to be, where you, the part of the brain that you want to be stimulating. Interesting. So you can direct it. You can, you can direct, direct the flow of energy. Yes, you can. Now, uh, you can you can direct it in the sense that you can pinpoint it, or you could direct it in the sense that you could focus it on one part of the brain uh -huh. and amplify that signal so that it's much stronger. So this is why we do magnetic field therapy for depression. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So in in and these are these devices are FDA approved. I read that. Like depression. it's been FDA DA approved years. for quite a long time. Yeah. Yes, years. The 70s. And there's millions of people who have been treated with this technique. So what you do is you take a coil. It's called a, a figure of eight coil. Mm -hmm. And you actually put it over the um, motor cortex, the part of the brain that controls functions of the extremities, mm -hmm. hand movements, and so on. It's called the motor cortex. There's a whole strip called the motor strip, mm -hmm. right? That controls different parts of the motor system. Right. So if you hit the right strip, you can get your hand to move. If I stimulate here with the right intensity, all of a sudden my hand will start to move involuntarily. Yeah. The brain is doing it's it. It's just sending the signal. But we're stimulating that spot to produce a signal and that activating that tissue that then causes the signal to go down to the arm or to the hand and causes the hand movement. So we use that principle in medicine to calibrate the intensity of the magnetic field. Okay. So this is called the motor threshold. Mm -hmm. So we determine the motor threshold and say, okay, this is the intensity of the magnetic field we need to be able to treat. So what is the outcome? Then what's the benefit? Like for well, depression? Well, let's, let, let me finish. Okay. So you're, you're, you're rushing me here. That's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's a good, but it's a good question. It's an important question. So what you do is you take that information. So that's the motor threshold. Mm -hmm. They say, okay, now do we want to go less than the motor threshold or do we want, do we want to go higher than the motor threshold? Okay. The motor threshold is not the same as the, uh, let's say, the emotional threshold. Okay, sure. Right? Yeah. So then they take that coil and they put it over the front of the forehead, mm -hmm. usually the left area of the brain. Mm -hmm. And then they increase the intensity to, say, 100 to 20% more than the motor threshold. Okay. Then what you try to do with that is to stimulate energy or charge production in the brain. Okay, so it kind of brings your brain to life in that area. In that area. Okay. So at that, then you do that often enough, it, it treats depression. 
Now, you've probably heard of ECT. Yes. Electroconvulsive therapy. Yes. Well, in a sense, this kind of magnetic stimulation of the brain was designed to replace ECT. Interesting. Okay. And ECT was like that old school for people that don't know, right? It's electroconvulsive. It's con causing convulsions. Yeah. It's what you see in sort of like horror movies now. <laughs> well, it is a horror movie. Yeah. And so you have to, I, I've actually done EKGs while they were doing ECTs. Wow. So then you have to give them some a biting guard because mm -hmm, it's guard because they cause it, they must subtract in the in the, the mouth and jaw. This is much safer. Must it's much 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 safer. safer. And the side effects from this are way less. On the other hand, unfortunately, it may not be quite as powerful as ECT. Okay. So you may need more treatments than you would with ECT. Mm -hmm. But people who who get AC, ECT are often seriously compromised in terms of their mm -hmm. ability to function. Mm -hmm. Because you're you're, re, you're doing an electrical reset of the brain. Right. It's like doing a, a heart stim. Right. You know, if you yeah. have a heart attack or something, your heart stops. Yep. To shock your heart, bringing you back to life. Well, in, the, in this case, you're shocking your brain. Mm -hmm. And then you cross your fingers and hope that the results are okay. Right. Right. Not the case of PEMF. <laughs> Not the case of PEMF. So the PEMFs then do the same thing, uh, and we're relying on the fact that the brain is now producing charge, mm -hmm. stimulating the tissues that control emotion. Yep. And the neurochemicals that are released as a result of that stimulation and the brain activity and so on. You're influencing the biological cascade. A cascade of the brain and the cells of the brain and the different parts of the brain. So if you have a seizure disorder, uh, you can use magnetic field therapy to treat a seizure disorder too. Amazing. Not just to locate the, the seizure focus, but you can actually treat the seizure focus. By the, turning up and down the intensity. By turning the sensitivity levels of the triggers that cause the seizures. Okay. They did a study in, in, I guess it was rats, but they gave the rats a medication mm -hmm. almost uniformly causes seizures. Okay. Almost always causes seizures. Guys. Poor little guys. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, little guys, Thanks, for rats. helping us out. Um, so what they found then is that if you do magnetic field therapy and you give the rats the medication, they don't have seizures. Wow. That's amazing. Right? And we've seen the same that's thing gonna, with the heart. That's going to give people so much hope. For people that feel stuck. Well, this. yes, and if you start doing it, is it better off to have magnetic field therapy than to have ECT? Yes. Or to have surgery if you, if you can avoid the surgery, or to have medicate use medication that can leave you with all kinds of dependencies and all kinds of problems recovering from them. Mm -hmm. Most of the seizure, uh, most of the medications for depression take a long time to recover from. Yes. Yep. You don't recover easily. Right. But there's another problem with this with antidepressants too. They take about five weeks to kick in. You right. Right? And if it's not the right one, then you're going through cycles. I have it you repeat over and over again and you do different ones. But what the risk is, is you could have suicidal ideation while the medications begin to work. Exactly. Yep. Right? Yes, I've seen this first. So this is a problem. Yeah. Because it's not working yet. So but magnetic field therapy works like that right away. And it's less invasive. And it's actually, from what I hear, quite pleasant. I've seen lots of people laying on your mats at this conference and really just enjoying themselves. And even, even to the stimulation of the brain, with high intensity magnetic stimulation of the brain. Now there are magnetic devices that are sold to the people who sell them to don't treat the brain. Mm -hmm. Well, they don't read the science, mm -hmm. but they're also not doctors. Yeah. Right, so they're telling you not to treat the brain because they can't tell you to treat the brain. But I've treated many brains. In fact, I did a study with uh, brain injuries, TBIs, concussions. Mm -hmm. I know that's a big problem for people. I know a lot of people feel very hopeless when they have that experience. Well, magnetic field therapy is amazing. So we actually did an objective study. I took 10 people who had a concussion, a history of concussion. We recruited them, said that we were looking for volunteers to do this study. Mm -hmm. We got a small portable magnetic device, not one that causes seizures, right? Right. Very small portable. And we treated the front and back of the brain for an hour, side to side of the brain for an hour. Portable, again, battery operating, put it in your shirt. Uh, and then we had a, a, a device called a brain gauge to be able to measure their sensory motor function. Okay. So the brain function, mm -hmm. essentially. And how quickly their, their bodies are reacting and how different parts of the body are working together mm -hmm. as part of the TBI. Because TBI causes many, many issues yeah. in the brain. It's yeah. not just one, one problem. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so we did three months of that using the, the measures before, during, and after. Mm -hmm. We had to stop it for, for a month. After three months of treatment, and then remeasured them. Mm -hmm. They all lost about half of their benefit. The benefit in the, it, within the first week to two weeks, already all of them were thinking better, thinking more clearly, had less mood problems, had had, no, had less pain, mm -hmm. slept better. Just a whole lot of changes, physiological changes were happening from the magnetic field stimulation. But they lost ground 
50%, they lost 50% of every one of them lost 50, at least 50% of their benefit after one month of no, of no treatment. Okay. So it has what we were, continuous. Well, what we were hoping for is that we would be able to repair the brain. Right. Right. So this suggested to us that the benefit was lost. That meant the PMF therapy was helping with the function mm -hmm. more than it was helping to repair. Interesting. Now, what we don't know, based upon that study with that device for those people, if they had continued it for six months, whether they would have lost the benefit or whether we would have had a permanent gain mm -hmm. in benefit. Mm -hmm. We don't know that yet. But I did review a, I did a review a whole host of papers for concussion using high intensity PMF therapy. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's this dramatic benefit to TBI. Okay. So, the, but the problem is most research is limited. Right. right. They don't treat you for six months or, or a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they don't want it for a month or two months and then they see what happens. It's too expensive to do these studies and do that kind of follow up. Yeah. So from what we're seeing, the people who do buy PEMF equipment and use it the proper way for their concussions mm -hmm. maintain their benefit. Interesting. And then what we haven't been doing, we haven't been doing this long enough to know that two years, three years, four years, five years later, yeah. that there's a benefit. There is a lot of research out there, though. There is and, quite a bit. And so can, can you tell everyone where they can find your information and, and some of your, do you have studies up or things like that? Sure. Um, well, I wrote a book called Power Tools for Health that has 500 references in it. I, I discuss concussion to some extent, but there's a whole section in there on brain aspects. Okay. Different, different issues with brain, including depression, including migraines, including okay. strokes and MS and Parkinson's. All kinds of brain problems yeah. are amazingly responsive to PMF therapy. What was the name of the book one more time? It's called Power Tools for Health. Power Tools for Health. Um, unfortunately, we have to wrap up our conversation because we're out of time, but I would love to carry on the conversation with you on my show sometime, and we can talk as long as you'd like. Anytime. <laughs> anytime. And I'll go read the book, Top Power Tools. Power for Tools Health. for Health. And you're at drpollock.com. So the website is drpawluk, okay. drpollock.com. Okay. Go check out Dr. William Pollock for more information on PEMFs. Thank you. Unlock your full potential at the Biohackers World Conference and Expo in Los Angeles on March 29th and 30th. Connect with leaders in health optimization, learn the secrets to longevity, boost your performance, and dive into the latest biohacking and wellness innovations. Don't miss out. Tickets are going fast.